Faith and purity. Welcome to this Adeptus Sororitas Sisters of Battle Army Showcase. This army has been completed by Mailer and Amy, two of the artists here at Siege, and features awesome models like Saint Celestine, Morven Vile, we've got a Castigator tank, and also some awesome Sisters of Battle terrain. So let's jump in and let's have a look at the first heavy hitting unit from the force, which is the Castigator. And uh, it's a really awesome tank model that's been made for the Adeptus Sororitas army. Um, it's really nice to see a return to kind of like armored warfare with these guys. Um, they never really had that many specific tanks. You had the Emulator, the Exorcist, but this is just the mainline kind of battle tank for them, which is great. Um, obviously with the Castigator gun there, as you can see, um, I love the braziers just on each of the smokestacks, just adding a bit more sort of a grim dark kind of zealot kind of feel to the army, which is great. Got all these awesome little uh, ammunition crates and things that are just sort of attached to the side of the tank here as well, which is really nice. You've got a sister with a pintail mounted storm bolter there. Really nice to see uh, sort of a tank commander on the model as well. We've got this really intricate kind of patterned and uh, detailed uh, hunter killer missile on there as well. And something that I really do love about the kit is even on the uh, the rear of the tank, uh, it's got absolutely loads of detail, like a shrine on the back of the tank as well, which is just awesome. Uh, so that's this really, really lovely castigator tank. Um, and it's the little details that I do really think that make the model and finish it off extremely well, like even the little buttons on the inside of the hatch there, uh, where sort of like the uh, the crew might push a button to open the, or lock or even like sort of seal it from the outside environment or something. It's little things like that that really add the kind of real life kind of interest to this miniature. So that's just this awesome castigator. Next up to ferry around all the sisters in this army, we have the humble but ever tireless Rhino tank. Uh, and again, the same sort of lavish treatment has been done on this Rhino in regards to sort of detail. This is the uh, Adeptus or Sisters of Battle specific Rhino uh, with all the extra sort of filigree and things just on the side here. You've got extra sort of parchments with all this script on them as well. Um, and then again, if you move around the front here, you can see that all the lenses and everything are fully painted on the front of the tank. Uh, and even on the sort of uh, hunter killer sort of uh, launcher here, you've got the targeting lens just uh, picked out there. Um, but you can see on the side here, we've obviously got a really lovely Adeptus Sororitas kind of like detail, the, the inquisitional eye there with the word faith on that scroll, which is really nicely free handed on. And then the top hatch, we've got that iconic fleur de lis just on the top there with that sort of ominous uh, imperial skull just in the center. Uh, again, another sort of tank commander here with a pintle mounted storm bolter. And you can see the attention to detail even on the tank commander as well. That, that lots of extra sort of details and highlights have all been placed across the surface of that miniature. So that's just this awesome Rhino to carry around all the infantry from this army. So let's jump into the rest of the army and start with the Paragon War Suits, a fairly newer kit to the Adeptus Sororitas or Sisters of Battle range. Um, I do really love the uh, the extra little details on all the little sort of beads and uh, little filigree details and things that are across the surface of the model. Um, as you can see here, it's on the multi-melter and I've got like this huge power sword that I, I really like the fact that it's almost like a fleur-de-lis that's the central part of it, it's the actual blade, which is just awesome. Um, and if we move the model around, you can see around the back of the miniature, you've got the uh, sort of almost like a cape or tassel bit at the back with all that sort of uh, intricate little sort of detail work around the perimeter, which is just lovely. You can see all the metallics are fully highlighted as well, which is just really nicely done. And I do like the use of red on all of the kind of cabling just to denote those details and add an extra sort of warmer tone to the overall miniature. Uh, so that's this awesome Paragon War suit uh, from the army. So just to show you consistency, let's have a look at another one of the Paragon War suits from the unit. You can see all the uh, text there on the purity seal just on the waist. And again, all the gold work has got multiple highlight stages on it to add a lot of depth and interest. And I really do love the uh, tension on the candles on that, that sort of wick or the flame on top of it. You've got lots of little tonal variants on there just to show that they're burning away. Um, all the leather work with really sharp, consistent, straight highlighting across all of its surfaces as well. Uh, but just a lot of time and attention invested into these really intricate miniatures. And that's another one of the Paragon War suits. So to join the Paragon War suits in the kind of shock assault kind of role, we've got some Zephyrium. So you can see the really clean silver armor that's on this Zephyrium. You can see all the text and things on those purity seals, but every little bit of detail is fully highlighted through multiple stages. Um, and again, we've even got the casings on all the weapons painted. You've got this really nice attention to detail, the little screens and things just on the backpacks or the jump packs there, done in a really nice red kind of tone just to show that kind of high contrast to the yellowish hues on the gold. Um, again, really do love the internal red of the, the cape as well. Just adds a lot of warmth to the center of the miniature, which is really nice. Um, and you can see the lenses there just on the helmet have all been fully painted with catch lights and multiple stages of highlighting. And that's one of the uh, Zephyrium from the army. Let's also have a look at one of the banners from that Zephyrium unit. Uh, again, really super, super detailed, this model. Um, you can see all the exquisite sort of uh, details just on that actual pennant or flag. 
uh, all done in gold there, as you can see, and, and topped by a, a flaming brazier, which is uh, not the normal banner pole topper, but it works very much in the kind of like grim dark feel and vibe of this sister's army. Uh, you can see that little dove there, even with a little yellow beak with no expense has been spared on the doves in this force. Um, you've got the little yellow beak on there and you've got all the text and scripture that's just on that sort of trailing kind of uh, parchment or purity seal or, or really long purity seal that's just on there. Um, I love the sort of really commanding, zealous kind of pose, just pointing at a foe, waiting to vanquish them in the name of the emperor. Just such an awesome model. Um, do really love the use of the multiple highlights on the gold there, just to make it look very ornate across the miniature. And that's this banner bearer from the Zephyrium unit. So to join the Castigator in providing some heavy firepower for this force, we've got some Retributors. Uh, wielding the Melter and the Bolter, there's no Flamers in this unit, unfortunately, so not the Holy Trinity. But let's jump in and have a look at one of the uh, multi-melters from the force. And you can see right from the get-go, really cleanly executed with every single bit of detail fully painted through multiple stages of highlighting and also shading. Um, really like the use of the silver for the uh, sort of gun casings. It really denotes them and makes them instantly recognizable on the miniatures for the guns and weapons that they are. You can see that porcelain white sort of uh, haircut that this sister has got there. Really nice subtle gray toning on that hair as well, just to show that, that it's got a lot of definition, which is just great. Uh, if we move around the back, you can see that again, the screen's all painted there with red multiple highlight stages and a catch light just to show the light refracting off that sort of screen. Uh, and then again, I do really love the use of the red uh, tones here on all the tabards and capes just to add extreme warmth to these miniatures. Obviously, you've got that really bl dark black cold armor. Um, but then we've got this lovely warmth with these rich red tabards. And that's one of the multi melters from the Retributor unit. Leading the Retributors, we have a sister superior, and I'm going to pull her forward and have a look at her. Again, really, really cool pose. She's not even looking at the enemy whilst uh, wielding the maul high above her head. Um, you can see that all the little details like the inquisitional eye, the fleur de lis, you've got the, obviously the rosary beads just hanging at her waist. You've got everything there done in a lovely gold, really rich, warm toned gold just to work with the re warm reds on the uh, miniature. If we move around, you'll we'll see the inside of the cape is done with a really rich maroon colour compared to the outside, which is a lot warmer red as well, which is just nice. And as you can see, there's loads of scripture in that book. She's just reading away uh, towards the enemies of mankind. Uh, but that's just this awesome sister superior leading the retributors from this army. So to go with the Retributors, we've also got a squad of Sisters of Battle. Um, as you can expect, there's lots of infantry in this army, but the humble Sister of Battle is the core of any Adeptus Soritas army. Let's pull forward one of them to start off with and have a look at a Melter-wielding Sister here. She's just firing away, eradicating some foul heretic or Xenos, as you can see here. Really do love the attention to detail on the face. Every single bit of detail on there has been picked out massively with a really nice sequential highlight stages and a lot of shading and toning. You can see the porcelain white hair. It's got a couple of different highlight stages just to add a bit of depth and weight to the hair, which is nice. Um, you'll see obviously the lovely red tabards are consistent across this army from miniature to miniature that has them. And uh, Mayla's it's done a great job of just adding lots of tone and depth on there as well as the highlight stages. If we move around the back, you'll see obviously the same attention to detail has been placed on that cape towards the back. And I love the, uh, the really sharp, consistent sort of highlighting that's just done on those exterior folds, which is just really nice. Uh, but overall, a really clean, consistent paint job across all the miniatures in the infantry. Let's have a look at another one from the unit and let's have a look at the icon wielding sister. Again, who doesn't go into battle without a giant pole with a shrine atop of it? Um, you can see here, holding it with one arm, firing away with a pistol on the other arm. Really love the relaxed pose of this miniature. And you can see the attention, all the script and detail work on those parchments at the top. Got loads of highlight stages just done on that parchment as well as on the wax parts of the purity seals. Again, real nice balance of the wood plus also the kind of like gold work on there as well. Um, and if we move on to the sister, you'll see again, the exact same consistent attention to detail across every single highlight across all the armor panels, the cloth. Uh, we've even got the wood grain on the bottom of the staff as well. Uh, just all sort of individually highlighted there through multiple stages. And again, just around the back, you can see that stowed bolt gun just on the rear uh, with a really nicely highlighted and detailed kind of leather cowling, which is just holding that in place for her, uh, which is just really nice. Um, but again, super, super detailed, highly consistently painted miniature just to be part of one of the troop units from the army. So while the Zephyrium are flying above into combat, we have the Sacrosants on the ground. Another new kit, which is really great to see in the Sisters Army. Let's pull forward one of these so you can have a look. Uh, wielding a maul and a shield, you can see here, you've got this awesome Sacrosant model. 
I do really like the use of the whites for the exterior on the cloth. It gives them a bit more of an elite kind of look, which I think is really nice. Um, we can also see here that the model has got some silver and gold aspects to it that are all independently highlighted through multiple stages. If we go around, we've got this lovely kind of like coffin kind of shaped shield, which is just something a little bit different. You've got a bolt pistol on the inside wielded, wielded by the sister, and then you've got this shield cowling over the top, which is just really cool. You can see all the gold work through the multiple stages of highlighting that are done on there. And if we move around the back, you can see some really nice subtle highlight stages just on the white, just to add a bit of highlight, higher areas and a bit of depth on there as well, which is nice. Uh, so that's just one of the standard Sacrosanct sisters from the unit. So let's have a look at another one of the Sacrosanct. So we're gonna pull forward one of the sisters that is wielding a spear. Now they do have different armaments. Some have got spears, some have got mauls, and some have got axes. Uh, but here we have this sister wielding this spear, a really awesome close combat weapon, giving a bit more range. Uh, you'll see here that she's got a, a lovely kind of white tabard at the front with two sort of like bits of material that are flapped over that are also red in hue, which is really cool. You've got that central icon there, the inquisitional icon that all sisters carry, done in that lovely rich gold, as you'll see there. I do love the candelabra that she's wielding on her backpack. You can see with those candles there with all the lovely attention to detail on both the wax part, obviously the pinky sort of wax color. And we've got those little flames on the top as well, just with multiple colors on them, just to show that they're flickering away, which is just lovely. So this sister's wielding a plasma pistol on the inside of her shield there, as you can see with that glow effect just done on all the coils, just that thriving energy that's inside that plasma pistol. If we move around the side, we'll see here that her shield is slightly more ornate with a couple of more parchments and purity seals on there. Uh, and you've got some sort of inlay there, some silver inlay, which just adds a little bit more of a depth of detail to this specific miniature. Uh, if we look at the back, you'll see obviously you've got all the purity seals done, just to show consistency of all the scripture that's done across all of them. And again, you've got that lovely outer, outer kind of like porcelain white cloak there with some subtle highlights on it as well. But that's just one of the spear wielding sacrosancts from the army. So the final troop unit from this Sisters of Battle army, and we've got some sister novitiates. Uh, we'll start with the squad leader, the novitiate superior. Uh, denoted by her lovely red cape. Uh, I do really love the almost like crown that she's wearing as well. It's quite an ornate piece of headgear that she can see there. Definitely does not make her a target. Um, and if you look around the back, you'll see she almost has like a bit of an iron halo on her backpack as well, which is just a cool bit of detail. Um, I really love the use of the red and black, just to a bit of like a royal kind of feel to the miniature, which is just awesome. Um, so you have the leg uh, armor in black, and then you've got this separation of the boot color at the bottom, which is just awesome. Really pristinely painted silver sword with full edge highlights on all the details, which is just great. And if we move around the back, you'll see the real attention to detail on this beautiful rear cape that she's got there. That sort of, um, I love the effect of the material being pulled over the backpack and you can see the highlights and, and the striations between the different folds, which is just great. So that is the novitiate superior that leads all of the novitiates. So let's have a look at one of the other novitiates from the unit. Uh, let's pull forward one of these so you can have a look. Now, one thing we haven't covered yet in the video is actually the basing in this force, which is very different from unit to unit. And there is a reason behind that. Purely as our client wanted the army to be fighting in different environments, um, we have all manner of basing requests from clients sometimes. And this is a really interesting one where different units are almost like on different campaigns or different areas, but make collectively a force for their collection, which is quite an interesting one. Jumping into this novitiate, you can see she is just bounding forward, charging forward, attacking the enemy, not with weapon, but with scripture on this lovely scroll with loads of text and details that are put on there. We also have this really awesome kind of servitor thing, which is like a flying coffin with a speaker in it that I'm guessing just blurts out the emperor's wrath made manifest while she's charging forward. Uh, but she does have a trusty cane to back up the, uh, the scripture in case that fails. Um, but jumping onto the model, you can see the lovely uh, tones that are used on there. You've got the bluish for the kind of like leg, kind of like cloth. You've got the armored bottoms of the legs, which is just great. You've got this uh, the, the stereotypical kind of upper armored area of the miniature as well, which is great. We've got this white kind of veil that's also on her head, which is really cool. And again, just lots of use of different cold colors to give quite a menacing feel and vibe to the miniature. Um, to add some warmth, however, we've got this really nice kind of like tan colored kind of cloth work which is just really, really lovely and got some nice highlighting stages on there and some, some really soft and deep shadows just to add a lot of weight to the cloth. Uh, so that's this awesome novitiate from the unit. Uh, probably one of my favorite poses from the, uh, the squad of 10, uh, but yeah, really awesome miniatures. So to go with this force, we have also got some awesome Sisters of Battle scenery. We've got this saint, a living saint uh, statue, which is just really nice. And uh, Mayla's done a great job of adding almost like a dark ceramic kind of feel to it. Um, she's obviously stood atop a load of skulls as well, which is just very synonymous with the Warhammer 40,000 universe. 
Uh, to go with the Saint statue, we've also got this really awesome building with so much detail on it. It's got loads and loads of Aquilas, as you'd expect on any Imperial building. But we've also got these really awesome braziers on the balcony. Uh, you can almost imagine a sister of battle or canoness preaching from that balcony to the waiting army uh, with that smoke just coming out of the braziers. So a really awesome, awesome piece of scenery. And no expense has been spared on this. On the inside, you can see loads of details like little buttons and dials and screens have all been painted or the cabling has also been done. But uh, even on scenery, we still paint it to the highest of levels. So that's this awesome scenery to go with the Sisters of Battle Army. So to lead this force, we have got quite a selection of characters. Uh, first and foremost, let's jump in and let's have a look at Morven Val. Uh, great miniature in a Paragon war suit, very commanding, stoic pose, as you can see here, uh, with really refined highlight stages across every aspect of the miniature. I absolutely love the use of the cold blue tones on the cloth work, just to add a very menacing and evil kind of look to the cloth which is just great. If we move the model around, you'll see this basing on this miniature, we've got almost like a Sisters of Battle chapel with masonry and some tiling there. Also got a bit of fallen sort of building, that, that sort of metal area that she's standing on. Uh, but again, you can see that there's a variety of basing things across this army, just to show different areas of battle that these, this army has been in, which I think is an interesting way to present the miniatures. We also have uh, all the scripture on that scroll there. You can see it's really, really refined with all the little details and things that are on there. It's different color fonts and things, which is great. Now, a little detail which often gets overlooked, if we have a look on the back of the shield here, you can see that the power nodes or the energy nodes for that shield that she carries, uh, which is really interesting and just gives uh, shows you the attention to detail that we put on miniatures here at Siege. Again, if we look at the spear, we've got this beautiful spear that she's wielding. Lovely, subtle bluish tinge on this spear tip, which is great. And you can see that purity seal there just halfway down near her hand with all that text and scripture on it. got some red capital letters on there, which is really nice. Um, but I do love looking at her more now. We've got the, um, the really rich golden armor that she's wearing um, with loads of tonal variants on there and highlight stages just to add a real depth of kind of like tone onto the miniature, which is just awesome. You can see all the inlaid scripture and all of the little fleur de lis details just on the sort of uh, armored areas are just really intricately painted. And finally, just to go on the other details on the miniature, you can see just above the heavy bolter that she's wielding, even the little lens that goes above the target enemies has been painted in a rich red with multiple highlight stages and catch lights on there just to show the depth of that lens. Uh, so that is Morven Vile, one of the more intricate detailed miniatures from this sister's force, ready to lead this army. So when a sister falls in battle in this army, fear not, as there is a hospitaller amongst the leadership of the army to assist with the passing of the sisters to the Emperor's Light. And Mayla has done a tremendous job in painting this miniature. You'll see right from the get-go, there's a whole swathe of details, not only on the base with the fallen sister, but also on her, the cloth work on her waist, you'll see the amount of folds that are on there and lots of inner and outer portions of both perspective have been painted in different tones, the white and also the red. So you can see she's got some projectile weaponry injuries on her lower abdomen and uh, blood is flowing from those. And as you'll see, she's just grasping that inquisitional sort of uh, necklace that she's got whilst uh, passing to the Emperor's Light. And the uh, the hospitality, as you can see there, has got loads of intricate details on the uh, wrist as well. You've got the uh, screens and dials and vials of all the sort of different ointments and things that she carries. You've got the medical tools there on her backpack as well, the automated ones. Uh, and you can't forget these awesome doves, which are just carrying all the parchments and scripture along with her. But just a phenomenal miniature with so much going on on a massive base, just lots to approach when it comes to painting and all been done in a super sharp, super refined finish that Mayla has done a great job on. Another awesome model that's in this sister's army is Amalia Novena, a great sister of battle. For any of you that are familiar with old artwork, this model has been brought to life in a fantastic miniature, uh, an incredible sculpt with loads and loads of little intricacies. Um, I love it when a model it comes from a bit of artwork and this model does definitely not disappoint. You can see all the little the extra details, the gold work on the armoured areas, the inquisitional details, the bolter ammunition in the casing on the sickle mag. But we've got everything painted and picked out really exquisitely. I do really love the two sets of candles that are just on the base, uh, just adding that warmth either side of the miniature to work in a triad with the red of the tabard. Uh, and we've also got these lovely roses, these pink roses on the base as well. But you can see the intricacy on that sculpted base, every single aspect of it fully highlighted through multiple stages. Also, if we move around the back of the model, you'll see the same consistent approach to all of the areas of armor, the cloth with loads of tonal variants. You've also got the screen and buttons on the rear of the backpack that are fully painted. And even down to some of the parchment that's wrapped around the legs and things has all got writing and scripture added onto it. 
Uh, but overall, a really exquisitely painted character model for this army. A beautiful model in itself, but when put with an army like this, it just looks phenomenal. And before we get to the main lady herself, let's have a look at the Magnifier. A really, really iconic model from the Sisters of Battle range, right back to the older models pre-plastic range release. Uh, I do absolutely love the use of the kind of like marbled tiled basing on this. Something a little bit different that again, our client wanted uh, a different basing across all the different squads and units in this army to show different sort of campaigns and worlds that his army has gone on. Uh, but you can see the porcelain white armor of this icon bearer works extremely well with an outer sort of like obsidian black kind of like tabard with that lovely rich red inner lining just to contrast hugely against the colder white armor. If we have a look at the banner top, you'll see that inquisitional sort of symbol all picked out in lovely gold. And then you've got the top of the banner done in this almost like ceramic kind of like porcelain kind of color, which is just great with additional brass details just hanging off of it. If we move around the back, you'll see the same again, attention to detail and things like screens and, and buttons and dials and things across armored areas and weaponry. Interesting that it's got a red casing on the bolter, something a little bit different, maybe to denote a more senior rank within the sisterhood or the coven. And then you've got that lovely red key line just at the bottom of the cloth as well. Uh, so that's this awesome magnifier uh, to go with the army. So up last, but by no means least, we have the main lady herself. We've got Saint Celestine and her two Gemini. But before we get to Celestine, let's have a look at her Gemini. So flanking Celestine, we have her two Gemini, and these are really stunning miniatures, as you'll see. I do love the uh, sort of energy field on the blade there, so you can see just as it flickers in the light, you've got that really nice power node fully lit up and that electricity flowing down or arcing down the blade. Um, really nice use of red for things like the grenades. You can see all the individual little grip parts are fully highlighted individually, which is just shows the intricacy on this miniature. If we have a look at the inner lining of that cape. You've got lovely rich reds there, as you'll see, and you've got that sort of black kind of like corset kind of part of the armor as well, just to break up the model and add different tones and hues onto the miniature. Um, I do love the very much X-Men Rogue-esque kind of hairdo with that white section, which is really cool. And you can see the hair has also been highlighted with more of a bluish tone as well, just to contrast massively against that white kind of fringed area. If you move around the back, you'll see, again, we've got this beautiful, beautiful red cloth at the back of the miniature with loads of highlighting and tonal variants in some of the shadowed areas. If you have a look at the screen on there, you've obviously got that painted in red as well. And you can see all the metal work on the flutes from the exhaust is all fully high edge highlighted as well. Uh, so that's just one of these awesome Gemini miniatures flanking Celestine. So let's have a look at the other Gemini to go with Celestine and uh, really nice bookend miniatures, these two, one going in different directions. You can see obviously the other one here just firing her pistol in a different direction, so to her right. You can see the same kind of hairdo with that sort of uh, white fringe, which is a really nice detail and uh, just separates that hairdo out and gives a bit of contrast on the head. All the facial details fully painted and things, which is just great. You'll see again, the same consistency on the sort of uh, arcing electricity on that sword, on the power sword. Uh, one thing I do really like that's been done on this is the inquisitional symbol just hanging at her waist. It's actually done in like a green marble kind of color. Um, again, that really nice subtle desaturated green just to work with the red, which is really nice. Um, you can see all the scripture and stuff that's done on that sort of tassel, the purity seal parchment that's hanging from her foot. And if we move around the back, you'll see again the exact same attention to detail on the jump pack with those flutes all fully highlighted across all the areas of the metalwork. Um, I do absolutely love the rich warm gold on this miniature. There's so much tonal variance on it and it just adds a lot of interest to the already defined armor that she's wearing. Uh, so that's another one of the Gemini. And finally, but by no means least, we have Saint Celestine herself. What a model to lead this force uh, and uh, it's exquisitely painted and some of it, it's got so many details on it, which I absolutely love. So let's start with my favorite thing, which is the Ardent Blade. You can see that beautiful kind of like fire sword that she's got. You can see the licks of flame just going down it as well, which has been painted on, which just looks really, really lovely. And obviously you've got quite a hot temperature there on the sword, but I love the balance of the cool blue just on the doves. Uh, on the other side, it really balances the model lovely. Um, and just adds a lot of different temperature interest to the miniature. Um, you can see the splashes of red across the model with obviously the cape and the cloth work. And you can see this lovely free-handed key-lined pattern on the inside of the cloth, which has just been done to an exquisite finish. If we have a look at all the roses and things that are just hanging from the Ardent Blade, they've been done in a pink to match the roses that are on the blade of Amali and Avena in the army. If you also have a look at the sort of like corset area, I love that detail where it goes from red to black to red to black. That's a really good, great use of color to segment the model and add some kind of like heraldry to her and show her sort of stature in the army. Um, nice use of like orange tones for the highlighting on the red across different areas of cape as well, keeping that warmth kind of centralized on the miniature, which is just great. 
Let's not ignore all of the scripture and free-handed details that are on this massive parchment hanging from her and giving her that elevated status on the base. Now you can see all the time that's been taken to write the capital letters, the little red boxes that are around those. You've got all the little individual areas of text. You've got some fleur-de-lis that are just put on there. And it is on both sides of that parchment. And there's so much text and scripture that's been put onto there. So a great investment of time to obviously just add that all on. We can't ignore the beautiful wings that Celestine has got. And you've got this lovely kind of like darkish blue hue towards the central part. And as it goes out, it sort of increases in saturation and brightness to that desaturated white tips, highlighted with some sharp white as well, which just looks really, really great. Uh, and then you can see the cables and things just on the backpack. Uh, you can see those painted in a red as well, just to denote those and add a bit of interest to those specific sort of cables and things on there. If we move around, you can see those doves again, the underside of them. You can see that bluish hue that's on there, just a really cool kind of colorway just to add interest to them. All of them painted with their beaks, are painted black, and you've even got the little details on there, like the individual plumes and things. So that's this awesome St. Celestine model uh, to finish off the force and lead it in the eradication of the foul Xenos, heretic and mutant. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I do hope that you've liked this awesome Sisters of Battle Army Showcase. It's a phenomenal project that I hope our client is going to massively enjoy for their gaming and display requirements. If you're interested in an army like this from us, then do not hesitate in going to the description of this video where there is a link to our website and our contact form where you can get a quote from us. From all the team here at Siege and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. I'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.